Hi everybody. So last week I said I was going to talk a little bit about AI actor controls in Unreal, but I'd like to pause our development tutorials briefly here to talk a little bit about an announcement that was made on Tuesday, February 19th, that's two days before the airing of this episode, that Amazon.com Inc. is releasing a new game engine called Lumberyard. I'd like to weigh in on Lumberyard a little bit and talk about what we might, as a development community, see come of this. So the short version is that on February 9th, Amazon announced a new game engine called Lumberyard, which is based off of the popular CryEngine, the engine used to create games like Far Cry, Crisis, MechWarrior Online, and Star Citizen. The major distinguishing factor of Amazon's Lumberyard when compared to the CryEngine being its native integration of Amazon Web Services, or AWS, which is a suite of network and server solutions, and Twitch streaming, Twitch.tv being the current world leader in live video game streaming, bought last year by Amazon.com. Under the hood, and presumably especially now, the engines are most likely going to be nearly identical. CryEngine has a very well-established underlying framework, so what one can most likely expect from Lumberyard early on is much of the same with a different skin. As Amazon has effectively fully purchased the source from Cryware, however, the expectation is that the two products will diverge into very distinct engines in the future. However, in its current form, it's another AAA scale game engine with a few new bells and whistles, but not a whole lot else. The real big selling point of Amazon Lumberyard, though, is that it's free. Free to use for general game development, including source code access, with the stipulation that networking is done using their AWS services, which of course are paid. All in all, it's a very strong offer. Even Unity and Unreal require that the developer pay at some juncture, be it a 5% royalty of gross revenue beyond the first 3000 made on an individual product in Unreal, or $75 a month for a splash screen free version of Unity with obligation to buy a $1,500 iOS or Android Pro license add-on if you make more than 100000 in revenue or funding the previous calendar year. When you also consider that even a regular monthly subscription of the CryEngine is $9.90 a month, or an undisclosed amount for full source code access, quoted at about $1.2 million for CryEngine 3 back in 2012 if the rumors are to be believed. I've never worked with a full commercial license of CryEngine, so can't confirm these claims. Not that I wouldn't have been beholden to an NDA even if I could. But this is a big deal, especially the source code part. For script peasants like me, this is less of an issue since I couldn't code my way out of a paper bag, but ask a programmer how much easier their life would be with access to source code in any engine. I bet the answer would be much easier since it gives you access to all of the nested functions that the engine might not otherwise expose to the programmer. It also allows them to fiddle with how the rendering engine works or any other number of things which the casual feature inquiry might elicit the response of, sure I could do that if I could reverse engineer the entire engine. So a free engine is a big deal, especially with unlimited source code access, and may honestly attract a reasonable number of developers. At least small independent studios or hobbyists that want to release a game with no obligation to the engine licensor. And I am rooting for them. As a dyed-in-the-wool Unreal developer at the moment, it's funny for me to say this, but I really believe that competition will be good for the industry in general, but I'm also healthily skeptical about the prospects that Lumberyard has in drawing developers it really needs to popularize it. You see, the big problem with new engines right now is that all-purpose high-end engines are an entrenched market. Unity and Unreal were some of the first out of the gate, so they also attracted the most looky-loos, who in turn learned the engine and helped others learn the engine after them. Now this may seem like a small thing when you consider that most of these engines come with thousands of pages worth of engine documentation, but engine documentation is limited insofar as what it really gives you is a description of what things do, but not necessarily lessons on how to use those individual functions. And often it doesn't adequately explain difficult concepts. This is where having a forum with thousands of people or having access to sites like Unreal's Answer Hub are invaluable. Starting out, you're going to have very few people available to help others. Documentation will undoubtedly be sparse and you'll have very little support structure to help you learn. This is likely the reason that Autodesk Stingray Engine is still relatively unknown, aside from their license fees. A look at their support site shows 9 articles in their Getting Started Guide and 83 articles in their Troubleshooting section. 
You need a big community to be interacting and assisting one another in order to help sand down that difficulty curve in the use of your engine. But sadly, it's the same kind of paradox that plagues multiplayer games. You need an active player base to draw in more players. If nobody's playing, then in turn, nobody can play. Try to get into a match of Monday Night Combat or Natural Selection 2. Both are great games, but they don't have a player base, so unless you're bringing in everybody who's going to play, you aren't going to get a match started. But I'm going off on a tangent. The point I was trying to get around to, in a roundabout fashion, is that unless they do something very specific like cater to a niche genre like point-click adventure games in the case of Adventure Game Studio, or be awesome at 2D platformers like Game Maker, you've got a couple of 800-pound gorillas in your way that already have all of the bananas. Their main hope most likely lies in the fact that they're offering the product for free, giving the farm away, but is that going to be enough? I'd like to talk briefly about another free engine. I mentioned it in the first Thursday video very briefly, but I feel like I didn't do enough justice to Project Anarchy, the ill-fated engine experiment by Havoc, makers of Havoc Physics and Havoc AI. Project Anarchy was unveiled right around the time of GDC 2013, with an eye-catching logo and a handful of big parties for developers at the conference. It was explained as being a free engine for development on iOS and Android at the low, low cost of, hey, tell your friends, we'll even promote you on our site. Sure, it cost 500 bucks a head if you wanted to make a PC game with it, but it was designed specifically for mobile and didn't make any claims to the contrary. It included Havoc Vision, which is the base engine, plus Physics, AI, and Animation Studio, which is basically the whole Havoc repertoire as of the time. I know that sounds silly that an established company known for its quality middleware would basically just give away something that another company could charge literally millions of dollars for in some cases by simply waving a flag. Hell, by offering cross-promotion, Havoc was practically paying people to use their engine, but Havoc's attitude towards the venture and strategy was very well conceived in this respect. They understood that you live or die by your user base and were trying to carve out a niche in a solid granite edifice. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. Project Anarchy doesn't show up in lists of known engines, and the Vision Engine was used in the creation of only three known games in 2014 and two in 2015. Now, Havoc are still doing well for themselves. Their physics middleware is still incorporated into a good percentage of the AAA games that have been released in the past few years. But it's still a shame, because in a sea of people competing for AAA, Havoc was shooting for mobile, which is a great idea. Hopefully Lumberyard also has the sense to attempt to punch at its own weight and find an underserved corner of the market that they can latch onto. But CryEngine with native network support, though native network support being a compelling selling point, might not be compelling enough. What they do have though is advertising money, and a good foothold in that there are many developers who use AWS already as at least a prototyping network solution, if not the whole kit and caboodle. People are talking about it, which is what they need. The more eyes that are on the engine, the more likely it is that people are going to try it out and spread the word. Now I'm going to take this one with a healthy spoonful of skepticism salt, but it is at least welcome competition for the non-bucks of developers that don't have a lot of upfront money to devote to their projects. So I think we can expect to see a lot of people jumping in on the it's free bandwagon, and I won't belittle their integration of some other features. Networked games are big money. Not only that, but network and server engineers are a rare and sought after breed in the games industry. So there are many developers who will find value in any possible way to help mitigate the fact that, as a smaller studio especially, you're going to be likely having a harder time finding someone who can do the whole network infrastructure thing than, say, a gameplay programmer, or a low-level engine programmer even. I can't honestly predict how Lumberyard will turn out, but I can say that Amazon will need to be pushing very, very hard in order to generate the kind of interest that they'll need. They got off to a good start as I saw it shared on many of my various news feeds from many different sources, but momentum is hard to keep up, and clawing your way up the hill of Unreal and Unity's already diehard user bases is going to be Sisyphean if they aren't going whole hog. Now if you're a developer testing out Lumberyard and you think it's great, tell me here. Tell other people as well because that's going to be very important in the days to come. They're certainly making a concerted push. 
The Amazon Game Dev YouTube channel uploaded more than an hour or so of introduction videos highlighting their various features to help getting interest developers started, but hopefully that's merely the tip of a big incoming iceberg. But it's ultimately the users that are going to make or break this engine. I'm very interested in seeing where this goes, even if I may never use it professionally myself. But who knows? I may just install it on my home computer and give it a whirl in my spare time, if nothing else then so that I can give a few more educated thoughts about the engine at some point down the line. But in the interim I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching, and I hope that I'll see you next time where I promise that I'll get back to talking about AI in the Unreal Engine. Thanks very much.